Hey guys, today we are rendering a watch in F-Storm without any use of HDRIs or external maps and also some quick post-processing, so let's go! I just thought that I could share this with you because I had a question, uh, someone in the Facebook group asked how to do a watch render with, you know, getting this nice stainless feel to it. And there were suggestions like using HDRIs and, and building environments and stuff. <clears throat> and as I feel like, you know, as always, do not overcomplicate things. Uh, so this is my actually my first uh, ever try of rendering a watch. This is from last summer. It's not great, you know. It's not it's not awesome, but it's pretty decent. So I thought that I would share this with you. Um, so basically, this watch model is from Turbo Squid. Uh, not really sure who did it, but it's really nice. So, and this is what it looks like. And if I would, I can start just breaking down the scene a little bit. So first of all, the background. If I just, you can see my render settings here. And there is a background, but there's no environment, no HDRI, just black environment, so it doesn't do anything. And the alpha environment, which is just the, you know, the background, it's just a gradient map looking like this. So I, I noticed that the default gradient map kind of like doesn't really give a nice gradient. So I had to scale it up. So you see, I have a tiling to 0 0.6. So the gradient is actually like outside of the of the frame, but and then just having to add some points here. But that way, I could get some a pretty nice gradient. Because in watch renders, the background you're using is like as important as the watch and the lighting itself. Because with just a plain black background, it'll look really boring. Um, so that's it, and the rest of it. It's just lights, lights like this. So let me, um, this is four lights here. And if you would see uh, in the light, I have a texture, which is a gradient map as well. So this one, I can just save it there because I will, um, I'll hide these lights for now. So you will see that when there's no lights, everything is black like this. So what I would like to do um, because you see, there's nothing else fancy going on here at all. So it's just, you know, here you have like a standard F-Storm uh, start scene. So adding the background. And then what I did is to lock this viewport and then go to another viewport. Make sure to have the real-time geometry update enabled like this. And uh, add a light. And we want to make sure that the light is targeted. Otherwise, it's really hard to control. So like this onto the face of the watch. So here's what it looks like with just a color. Pretty boring. And let me just show you the material as well, because the material is important. So here, I have you can you can not care about that, but here <clears throat> there's a mix between two materials. These are essentially the exact same material, but one is classy 0.5 and the other one is 0.45. And there's a mixed value there. So if I would go to one, we have this material, which is pretty blurry, and then go to zero, then we have this material which is pretty sharp. <clears throat> so the reason for mixing those is to be able to have sharp reflections, but still having like this glowing gradient out of the reflections. <clears throat> Sorry, basically like a car paint. So if we do like that, you can see that we we'll still have like these sharp edges here, like here. And like here, you see there's this is sharp line curving here, but you still get this fading reflection like that. Here it is extra visible. Like if I go to zero, you have this sharp reflection, you have the blurred one, and if you mix them, 
you get this nice effect. This is a really good way to get metal feeling. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, now, what I like to do, um, because, you know, you might want to have the sharp reflections, and then that's okay, you can have that. Uh, what I did is to use a texture, and then add this gradient here, just a standard gradient, as the texture. And that way you will have a little bit more control of the reflections and how they behave. And you won't get these like really hard edges. So basically what we want to do now is just, okay, let's flip this. First, what I want to do is to find the reflection of the actual like glass here. And this is where real time geometry really comes in handy. There we go. Okay. So I, I kind of want it on the upper part here. You can see the glass starts to reflect it as well. Uh, and if I pick the glass, you can see that I have made the glass with just a little bit of glossiness to the reflection. Um, just to, you know, smooth out the reflection a little bit to make it more like product render-ish. And <clears throat> when you do watch photography in real life, you would actually take a lot of different photos with just one light on each photo in different directions. And then you would mix them up in Photoshop to, you know, uh, with blending modes to be able to add all the different lit shot together into one single shot. Um, I'm too lazy to do that. So that's not, you know, I'm not a professional watch photographer, so I don't really have that expertise, but that's how they do it. So anyway, let's say that I have a nice reflection here. I kind of like it. So I'll just hold shift and copy this over to somewhere else. I do not want it as an instance. <clears throat> then, you know, just continue working with finding the reflections. And basically all you want to do now, you're not lighting the watch. You're just reflecting it. You're just finding ways to add reflections to it. That looks nice. Not lighting really. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> wow. This is a bad day. I got to quit smoking and I'm not even smoking. So let's add something from the bottom here. And maybe, I don't know, make it a lot bigger. There's actually a way, like if you are, I don't know if it works with targeted, but if you're not using targeted, and let's say that we have a light here. There is a feature up here. Um, I think this one, which if you hold and click, you would see that the reflections of the lights will actually start matching where you click it. So if I click there, I will get the lamp will go there to reflect there. Actually a pretty nice feature. So let's say I want to do a copy of this and I use this and I want the reflection like there and I got it there. Where I want it there, and I got it there. This is actually a really nice tool in cases like this. Just gonna see if it actually works with targeted as well. Yeah, it does. Cool. <clears throat> so you could like use this to easily find a spot for reflections, and then you can just fine tune it later. So like here, I got a nice this little highlight there, which works really nice in my favor, I think. So. I think I want to keep that, but I want to maybe make it a bit wider like that. And then maybe I want to make a copy of this. You know, I only used four lights in the previous ones, but this is, this is all about, you know, finding a good balance. You don't want to use too, too many lights obviously.
And this takes time, you know, you really have to um, experiment and, you know, see what works and what looks nice and what doesn't. Now we're starting, now we're talking. <clears throat> and like here, maybe I want to rotate this because you can see that it's kind of like, uh, it's like shaping off like that. So I don't want that. So I'll get to rotate this to see if I can. Okay. That's not because of the rotation, just because of the shape of the watch. So never mind about that. But so this is, you know, the uh, <laughs> simple way of, of doing this. Um, and you know, I could increase the values of some of these. I, I'm not really fond of this reflection here. They're just looking pretty nice. You get this little gradient there, but not too much. You still have this like really nice edge there. So this is good. I think this is good. <clears throat> uh, let's settle with that. And then you would also realize that I, because I had another shot, if I can just um, find it. So here's the first shot. It's not identical, but it's pretty close. So, uh, I mean, it's up to you to tell which one is better. But so, and I had this one as well. And one thing you would realize is that this lighting will not work if you change the camera. So if I, whoops, go and change the camera here. I'm just gonna like this. I'll set a new camera, control C. This is not working. It's looking like crap. So you will have to have, obviously, um, unique lighting for each camera. So, because this is all, as I said, this is all about, this is not lighting the object, but more reflecting it. So as soon as you change the camera, you will screw everything up. So you will have to redo everything. So make sure to have the camera set up first. But yeah, um, this is what I've been doing basically. And I think actually if I can, if I move this back there, I can still use this because I think it'll, yeah, it'll remember how far I had it from the object. So you can tell that um, doing a watch render like this is actually really easy. <laughs> it's just uh, moving around lights and there's no HDRI because, I mean, someone said that you should find a good HDRI to have as an environment. And I said, no, that's not doable because you see here how important it is to have all the lights in the exact right spot. And you will never find an HDRI that will do that for you. So you can, you can use HDRI studio, for example, and like with key shot or whatever to do this easily, or you just do it this way. Um, and anyway, so I'll, uh, I can open the other one. So here it is. This is the other angle. And if I start this rendering now, I'm just go down to thousand and start this again. And here it is. And you can see it's the same setup, but with the lights in different positions. This is not like super great. This is, I mean, doing like this might be better to get more like gradients. Um, and as I said, you know, I'm not a professional watch photographer, but I, I, I'm really pleased with this result. 
as like the first try of ever rendering a watch. And I realized that doing a decent quality watch render is really not that hard. So I hope this was useful to you. And uh, I'll upload this video publicly. But if you are a patron, I will also share this scene with you, not with a watch because it's bought. So I can't really share that, but I will share the scene. All right, so I'll just very quickly show you the post-processing of this as well, and it's really, really simple. Uh, this is in Affinity, and I will share with you this uh, Affinity file, but if you don't have Affinity, you can't open it, so I might as well just show it to you. So first of all, there's a black and white layer. It just makes it black and white, because this is a little bit of warm tinted, so I just made it black and white, because for this watch, there's no colors anyway, so I could, I could do it. How was that? Oh, uh, anyway. So, and here, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I've masked everything out, you know, except the watch itself. So, just I didn't want to mess up the, you know, the background. So, I added some curves to the watch just to add some contrast and stuff. I denoised it. Not really sure why, because there's not any. Oh, yeah, you can see the noise here in the background. So, that's what I did. Uh, took a little bit away of that, I suppose. Anyway, and a high pass filter to just add some slight sharpness to it. So that's it, guys. Um, all right, so, so uh, if there's anything you're wondering, any, any questions you might have, or anything that you feel that I left out, uh, drop a comment. And uh, you know, I, help, I hope, you know, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys are not rendering watches, but you know, it could be a fun thing to try. So hope it's helpful and peace out.